I'm gonna be showing you how to fix this sharp power supply, which the customer was experiencing a no power fault. My first step is going to do some multimeter checks, so let's get started. All right, my first step is to do some resistance checks, and we're gonna start with the fuse. So with the fuse, a blown fuse will appear open, unlimited resistance, and a shorted fuse is a good fuse. So when I'm doing my check here, I'm seeing zero, or sorry, OL, which means that it is open. So this fuse is blown. Commonly with this power supply, we also see transistors short out, and some of these capacitors over here, the blue guys, can also blow up and need to be replaced. So I'm gonna start by checking my transistors. I have one over here, and this one is showing 2.9. Let me check the other leg. The other leg is 0.2 ohms. So this transistor under this heatsink is shorted and will need to be replaced. Let's check out this one. It is in parallel, so I am expecting it to also be shorted. 0 0.6 ohms, that's the shorts. And on the other leg, 9.94 kilo ohms. So I technically also have a short on that one, um, but regardless, we'll want to replace both transistors. So we're taking a closer look with our microscope here, and this is our transistor over here that we found to be shorted. We have two capacitors below it, and if we keep going down, we have a diode, and over here, C8, C7818. And we can see there is physical damage on this one. It's cracked open. So what that indicates to me is that this capacitor is actually damaged and needs to be replaced. Now this capacitor right here is in parallel, I believe, with C7817. So we're gonna wanna replace both of those. They are 331K, one kilovolt capacitors. And typically we can see when this transistor shorts out, the two capacitors next to it also get damaged. Same with this one, C7804A and C804B. These two capacitors also can get damaged when this transistor shorts out, which it did. So even though we're not seeing any physical damage on any of these capacitors, we are gonna wanna replace all six of them just in case there is some damage that we're not able to detect at this moment. All right, we're gonna be flipping the board over to the back and we're gonna start our desoldering of components, starting with the fuse. And because there is a lot of desoldering involved, I am gonna be using our FR301 desoldering pump from Hako. And to desolder these joints, I'm actually gonna start by adding a little bit of solder first. That'll help me get good flow on the joints. And once that happens, we can go ahead and desolder. I didn't get a very clean desolder job right there. Let me add a little bit more solder. We'll start over. All right, that's better. And let me see if I can pull it through. Okay, it doesn't seem like I can pull it through. So let me try a little bit more here. All right, and let's try again with this side. Oh, there we go, it just fell through. So here we are, we have our fuse. Next we're gonna do our capacitor that was actually physically damaged, and that was the C7818. All right, and then we should be able to wiggle that one out. That one's kind of hard to get a hold of. There we go. And there's our capacitor. Again, this was the damaged one. Now we have the equivalent on the other side over here. So let's go ahead and remove that one next. I didn't get very good flow. Let me start again. All right, that's better. And same thing, we should be able to pull that one through. There we go. So there's our another capacitor here. Now moving up to the other four capacitors, I am noticing that they've already been replaced. So this is not actually something that the customer had informed me of and I wasn't aware of it until just this moment, but I can clearly tell that these four capacitors have already been replaced. Um, so I'm not sure if they were originally damaged and if the customer just decided to replace them because of that uh, or if they just read online for some reason they, they just decided to replace them. 
uh, but they have already been replaced. They are 471K, 1KV, and, and that is the readings that I am seeing here on screen. So these are correct replacements. So we'll go ahead and leave them as is. If you're interested in trying to repair this power supply board yourself, I will have a repair kit available for sale in the video description down below. It will include all of the components that we are replacing today, including the four capacitors that were already replaced by the customer prior to receiving it. If you don't want to try and fix it yourself and you'd rather we do the job for you, we do have a flat rate service, again, listed in the description down below, and we offer a one-year warranty with our repair. All right, now we're gonna tackle the transistors. Uh. Uh. Nope, not quite, we still have a little bit. We just add more. Uh. There we go, I think we got it this time. So the transistors are locked in underneath the silver heatsink, so we will have to desolder the silver heatsink as well. So because my heatsink over here has a flat pin instead of a circular one, I am changing the tip on my FR301 to match that shape. So this is the tip we are switching to. So it's a more of an oval ellipse than it is a circle. And that will better contour this joint over here. All right. It does look like it is bent a little bit. So let's twist it out. There we go, that's better. Move over to this one. Same thing. It should just pull through, and it does. Okay, perfect. All right, and then this one is more flush, or flat, I guess. All right, so while I do have this special tip for the heatsink on, I'm gonna go ahead and tackle the other transistor, but because it's taking a little bit of time, I'm gonna do it off screen, so we'll reconvene once our transistors and heatsinks are pulled off of the board. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the original transistors. And something we can do real quick is a recheck of our shorts, and we do still have a short here. So we are getting 0 0.2 ohms. Obviously that's not supposed to happen, 2.9 ohms. So that does confirm that the transistor was the short. So before I install my new transistor, I am gonna remove some of the old thermal paste. And I'm just gonna dab some of the new stuff on here, try to give it a somewhat even spread. In fact, that's too much, so I'll use some of that to transfer over to the other transistor as well. All right, so new transistors are installed. We do need to bend the pins. Okay, now we can line them up. I'm in, and I'm gonna start by locking in my heat sink pins first. And now we can get to the transistor legs. We'll cut off the excess. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and install our capacitor, C7817. So to help it stay in place, I am gonna bend the pins out, like that I can let go of it and it doesn't fall through. Same thing, we'll cut off the excess. And we'll repeat that same step off camera for the other transistor. Same thing, I did bend the pins out so that the fuse stays in place doesn't fall through. All right, we'll get everything a quick clean. If you liked one of the tools that we use in today's video and you wanna purchase one of those, we'll have links in the description down below. I have my power cable plugged in, but my surge protector is off, so let's go ahead and turn that on. And my fuse didn't blow, so that's a good sign. 
Let's do a quick check to make sure that we are getting power where we should. We're getting a steady 402 volts. Let's check our transistors. 116 volts on that pin. We're getting five volts over here, zero over here. I think that's normal. Let's double check the LED driver, make sure we're getting voltages there. Okay, we're getting about 110 volts output. Let's check our voltages over here, going to our TCON and main board. So this is the TCON 12 volts. We're getting 11.9 volts, which is correct. Let's see, this is a 13 volt line. We are getting 13 volts. Let's check our five volts. That of course should be there. And lastly, okay, last one we're gonna wanna check is our standby. And that obviously is gonna be there, but we're gonna check it for fun, five volts as well. Okay, so that does confirm that our power supply is now fully functional, so we have successfully fixed it. If you're interested in sending in your power supply for us to fix, we'll have links in the video description. Again, we offer a one-year warranty on all of our repairs. We'll also have that repair kit available, uh, additionally also listed in the description down below. Otherwise, if you found the content helpful or useful, make sure to hit that like, subscribe for more, and thanks for watching.